Welcome to the second project in my carving puppet series. In this tutorial we're going to build a wooden hand puppet. Now I've got two designs for you which you can download. There's a witch character and also a pirate. Now to build your hand puppet you're going to need some wood and some material to make the sleeve. Depending on the character you build, uh, if you want to follow along build the witch you'll also need some hair and some felt for the hat. You probably need some paints to paint your puppet and you'll need a needle and thread for the sewing or if you have a sewing machine uh, that's very very useful. In terms of tooling uh, we need carving tools obviously, um, some sandpaper, we're going to need a drill and we're going to need the ability to rough out the uh, blocks. Now I use a bandsaw and a scroll saw. Um, if you have access to a bandsaw that's very very useful um, otherwise you'll have to cut these parts uh, out by hand with a fret saw. Um, other than that there's not too much tooling necessary so a couple of decent carving tools you'll be able to create a puppet like this. So let's have a look at the design. So here's one of the patterns this is for the witch and it consists of the the three wooden parts that you need to make for your puppet. You've got of course the head and the two hands. Now if you're going to design your own character um, you need to allow extra on the neck area here because this is where you control from underneath with your finger so your finger slots up into a hole in the base of the neck but you need a bit of extra material here you can see I pulled the material tight. I've got wood down here because you need to attach your sleeve onto the uh, the neck of the puppet there. So you need to allow at least that much on the base of your design for that. With the hands as well you can leave some extra material down the bottom here, some extra wood. This is not essential because you can make an inner cup uh, for your finger out of um, cardboard or leather, something stiff. Uh, I tend to have this piece extra because it helps um, ease for carving, gives you something to hold on to whilst you're carving them, but also it gives you a brace point on the inside at the back. So if you imagine that's at the back of the hand, when you're using your finger to push, you've got something to push against and then you make a, a sleeve for the front. This is not, um, let's say, it's not essential because you could you could make a whole sleeve and just attach to the wrist. So um, you might just want to leave a little bit extra on on the wrist there to attach your uh, material to. But um, I like to add this this extra bit on as well. So this is our our pattern. And if you're drawing your own one, you need to really um, have a front profile and a side profile shape and line those up because we're going to transfer these onto the blocks of wood before carving. As regards scale it's obviously entirely up to you what size you want to make it. If it's for an adult um, hand uh, the blocks will be bigger and the spacings will be bigger. If it's for a child you might want to shrink this down um, to make it easier for their hands to to manipulate and keep the keep the weight down. So that's really all we need for this build. There's no jointing as such as, as there was with the first project in the marionette. Um, so in that regard it's a fairly easy build. So all we've got to do is get some blocks, some wooden blocks of the right size and transfer our design onto our block so we can start cutting out. Now if you can't get a block of the right size, particularly for the head, um, you can always laminate, which is gluing more than one block together to make a bigger block. Uh, so that's always an option, particularly with heads. It can be quite difficult to get a, a you know one block the right size, particularly when it's machined up nice and square. But if you can get some nice square section timber to start with, um, and you can work around that. Of course, you can always alter your design to fit your block if that's how you want to go about it. Um, but obviously, remember on the on the sizing, you you know you you don't want anything too small if you're wanting to sort of use it as a performance um, puppet. So 
either scale your drawing to your block size if you if you've only got a certain block that you can use or you can glue uh, two or more than two pieces together to build out the blocks that you need again with the hands you might depending on the the block you've got you might want to have them on the block that or you might have them so that you cut each hand separately. I tend to pair them up because that way you can just cut, as you'll see when we come to the cutting, you can cut one um, profile and cut two hands at once, although sometimes I cut, if I'd use a scroll saw rather than a bandsaw, I can't do that. Um, but you might want to mark each of these hands onto a separate block and cut them out separately. So that's about it really. Um, just when you're thinking about design for your head, really sort of exaggerate the features more. Um, uh, you you don't want the puppet necessarily to be too realistic looking, particularly if you're if you're thinking about uh, uh, performing with it in a in a booth arrangement or a, or a theatre type arrangement. So, uh, or I always think it's better to sort of caricature the puppets a bit and it just bring everything, accentuate the the features that you want to show. So with this witch, for example, you know, really accentuated the nose and the chin and the ears, um, really to sort of make those pop out and make those be the first um, point of call of your attention. So it really makes the character uh, come alive a bit more. So think about that if you're designing your own ones, but if you're just starting off, you might want to um, build the either the witch or the pirate character that we've got the, the plans for you. So let's have a look at um, how we get these onto our blocks of wood. Okay, so we've got the design of our witch head here. And uh, before we do anything else, we're going to mark up uh, where the finger hole goes. Obviously when you're holding your hand puppet you need a hole to put your finger in to control the head. And this would be in the centre of the head here. And you want to go in about an um, inch, inch and a half, uh, but see what feels right when you've drilled the hole if you want to go a little bit deeper. Now obviously the diameter of the hole does depend on how big a fingers you've got and if you're making this for yourself as an adult or for, for a child, obviously if it's for a child um, you want a smaller hole. Uh, or I suppose you could pad the inside, do a bigger hole and pad the inside for um, smaller fingers. Uh, I, I use about an 18mm um, drill bit it's about the right size for my fingers but obviously you might want to test that and see see what feels okay for you so that's going to go in the middle of the block and we'll just drill that before we cut um, you could do it afterwards it's not a not a major problem but I'm going to do it before I cut now when you've got your block of wood if um, like this one it's actually not big enough for the full profile of the head. You can see I'd be missing missing some of the nose and the chin. Uh, you've got a couple of options. Well, you've got three three options I suppose. You get a bigger block if you can find one or you shrink your pattern to fit the block uh, but obviously you don't want to go get it too small. It depends on what size of the, the, the puppet head that you want. Uh, but option number three is just to glue a little extra piece on that will allow you to get to where you need to be. Now, you need two nice surfaces uh, for gluing together. You could, I suppose, put a dowel through the centre if you were if you were worried. If you're unsure about how good a surface connection you've got for your block, uh, then make the get a, a wider piece and make the joint at the back where it's not going to be seen. Uh, this for just economy of wood here is going to be easier for me to just because I only need this little extra bit on the nose and the chin um, so I don't even need full width. All I need is something to sit on like that to give me that extra little bits where I need it. Um, you could glue two bits on it's just I've got one, one piece there that's about the, the right size that I need so 
Um, so I'm going to glue that on as well. But first of all, we'll, we'll do this hole. So you'd line your drawing up depending on which way which way round you're going to um, do your gluing if you need to. And obviously the centre, you can then work from your drawing on here, the neck and the centre point of the neck, because it's obviously not centred to the block on this face anyway. It will be on the other face. So once you've got that mark, you can then square across from there and get a little uh, get a little set square if you've got one. And then you can mark that line across. On this face, because this is going to be the front face of the puppet, it will be in the centre. Um, so you can just measure your wood there and then take a centre mark across there and just do that. So that gives you your centre point uh, for where the neck is going to be and that's where we're going to drill. Now you can drill this in uh, a drill press if you've got one. Uh, if you haven't you can do this by hand. Uh, as I say I'm just going to use an 18mm drill bit here and I'll just get it started in. Okay, so just make sure you drill in nice and square, square into the block so you're not going in an, in an angle. Get rid of that and there you've got your finger hole. So I might go a little bit deeper into there, we'll see. I'll possibly go another half an inch in there. So that's quite a nice tight fit. Obviously it's not going to have the whole weight of the, the block on my finger. But I've got a choice of fingers I could use in there. So that's that. Um, we next need to glue this block on. Um, now all I'm going to do here is uh, a rub joint and clamp it. So we've got some glue. I'm just going to put some glue on here, you, as I say, make sure you get the, the two faces really nice, uh, nicely sitting together. This obviously is going to go in the centre of the block again, and uh, we'll just glue it on. So what I do is just apply some glue to this face quite, quite liberally. Got a nice amount of glue on there, and then just you might want to mark up where you want to put it. Obviously, I know where it needs to be, uh, which is basically in the center and towards the bottom. Then, if you just slide it backwards and forwards a little bit to push. The excess out. You don't want to push all the excess out because you'll be pushing all the all the glue. What you want to try and do is is create um, get rid of the the air that's trapped in there. So that's actually what they call a rub joint because you rub them together. And once you've got the air, you create a suction uh, for the glue to fit, and uh, that will you know that actually then holds itself in place. But you would want to clamp it as well, which is what I'm going to do, just to dry. It takes three or four hours to dry properly, I and mean, it's probably even better to leave it overnight. So I'll just get some clamps on it and we can leave it to dry then. You might want to put, you can always put some just alignment little pins in to hold it to stop it sliding about if it wants to do that when you tighten up the clamps. So 
So there we go, the clamps are just going to give a little bit more pressure on it um, so it doesn't have a tendency to uh, come apart. I'm not really over clamping it because um, again all that will do is force the glue out of the joint and uh, then it won't be stuck in the uh, come the morning time. So we'll leave that overnight and then uh, we'll come back and cut out the profile uh, for the puppet. Now this is dried, we can take the clamps off of here and we should have our nice piece glued on there. So we now use our drawing to attach. Obviously we've got this overlap here for the nose and the chin. So what I'm going to do just quickly is mark that up. We just cut it along there, the template along there, and just stick these extra pieces on. But I'm just going to mark roughly where they come. Just so as I can take off um, the excess wood first. Um, I'm just going to remove, quickly remove this on the bandsaw first, it will just make it a little bit easier to see. And also I want to attach the front profile on, so I need to trim out around there. So I, I need to just get, a, get rid of um, some of this extra. Obviously you wouldn't need to, if you've just glued on the little bits that you need, you won't need to do this. Okay, so I've, as you can see I've removed the excess from there. So I'm just going to get my pattern now and just trim it up so I can get it in position that I need. And we know that it's going to line up there and that needs to line up like that. So that's where I want it to be. So I'm just going to put some glue, a little bit of adhesive on here. There we go. Now, what, are you, what you can do, obviously, if you've got your piece on the back, it's not going to be so problematic. But um, cutting this section here, the paper is going to flap about, uh, so we might just move that down there. So you can just trim, trim that up along the edge and re-stick it onto there. Or you could just attach a thin piece of board or card. Um, to the top profile, which extends past. Obviously though, if you've got a, a big enough piece of wood, you won't encounter any of these problems. So, just put some on there, and then we can just line this up. Make sure you line it up carefully. That's another reason to have these sort of lines on there, just helps for lining up when you're doing this. There it goes, so that's stuck on there. Again, we can trim off the excess off here, make life a little bit easier. So now we've got to get this front profile on, which is going to be slightly tricky because we now need to cut around these sections here. So what I'm going to do is just cut out down the neckline probably, just the area that I need. Of 
bit more off the side there. Okay, so you can work around like that if you need to. Um, if not, you can always cut this profile first, or you can draw around there, draw this shape on if you're finding it that you haven't got the room to get that in. Um, what you also be useful to do at this point is put a couple of um, drill holes in for the eyes, just in the very center, just to line up the marks of the eyes. So. I'll do that in a minute. What I might do is just I'm going to take this little bit of this corner off here first and just get a gouge. bit of the glue. So now we should be able to attach this section and get the main profile cut out as well. Again, I'm lining up using my reference lines to line up the front and the side. You can see, so make sure that there you've got your reference lines on there, and then everything should line up nicely. <clears throat> it won't matter if it's a fraction out. So now we've got that, we've got a hole in the bottom. We're just going to pop, as I said, a couple of um, holes right through the centre of the eyes. And that would just give us a point when we come carving further in uh, where the centre of the eyes are. Now you want this to go in dead straight so if you've got a drill press you can use that uh, there. If you're doing it by hand just make sure you go dead straight in otherwise it's it'll be pointless what you're doing. 